about it. They will think about it when there's pain. That's the deciding factor. Okay, brothers and sisters, hear me clearly on that. Pain is your deciding factor on whether or not your rotator cuffs are engaging properly or not engaging properly. Hi, I'm John Hart and welcome back to Mr. America Hart. So today I'm standing here right in front of my power rack. I call it a squat rack a lot of the times. I know you guys have heard me in some of my other videos because, you know, I'm usually talking squats, right? But today, I'm not standing in front of my power rack to talk squats. There are certain exercises that are very, very important, especially for men over 50, for shoulder health, for body health. Overall, we need to make sure that we're choosing exercises that are very good for the longevity of our joints, but also to keep certain balances in place between muscle groups. And what am I talking about today? Well, if I'm not talking about squats, I'm standing in front of my power rack, I'm going to talk about some related exercise. And right now, here it is. I'm standing right underneath that chinning bar right there. You see that thing right behind me? At the top of my power rack, I have a chinning bar. And most people, most trainees, most people in the gym, in their, even in their garage, they have pull downs. As you can see in this example, my son Gabriel is doing some pull-ups and he's going to knock out about five smooth ones. And then he's going to show you how we use the band for people who either can't do pull-ups for whatever reason. So he's stretching the band across the crossbars, cross members, the safety catches of the squat rack, putting the feet fairly close together. And then you can see the band itself is already pushing up against his body weight. So it's relieving him of some of his body weight to have to pull up on. And he'll do five reps that way. <clears throat> and as you see, as you get near the top, there's hardly any help at all. So it does become a little bit more difficult as you get near the top. It's a great way to do banded pull-ups or chin-ups. I don't see anything in particular that's wrong with doing pull-downs. I think they're great exercises. Uh, however, it's very important that we start to make wise choices as we get a little bit older, as there's a little bit more wear and tear on those joints, especially the shoulders. It becomes really important that we do exercises that will promote the health of those shoulders and the strength, the strength balance between the bigger, stronger muscles. A little education on this one, okay? Our rotator cuffs versus our internal rotators. Our rotator cuffs are generally external rotator muscles. They externally rotate your upper arm. The internal rotators, the ones that pull it in, are very powerful. That includes your pec, it includes your lat, okay? Those are two very big and powerful muscles. Externally rotating the muscle, however, there's three or four muscles back there, infraspinatus, uh, supraspinatus, uh, teres, major, minor. Those muscles all have to do with stabilization and the rear delt. They all have to do with stabilization as well as external rotation. So two functions. When we are talking about balance, think of a baseball pitcher, okay? They throw that ball so hard, so fast, 95 to 102 miles an hour in the major leagues these days is sort of a standard fastball. When you throw that hard, the brakes, you're internally rotating that arm when you throw that as hard as possible. The brakes that stop your arm from swinging around and around and around is your rotator cuff muscles and that rear delt. Those muscles have to stop it from rotating around. So when you do it with such force, there has to be a strength balance shown on the opposite end of those big strong muscles that are propelling the ball forward. The balance comes from those rotator cuff muscles. Other than doing regular rotator cuff work, which I'm going to put down below in the video description to some of my other videos that I've already done on doing great rotator cuff work and stretches for your rotator cuffs. You could check all of those out. This one in particular I'm talking about is choosing more often than not to do pull-ups, chin-ups, any kind of up on the bar versus doing pull-downs. Okay, That's what I'm talking about today. 
let's make the choice to do chin-ups, pull-ups of all kinds. Wide grip, narrow grip, under grip, whatever the grip is. Choose to do that more often than not and reverting over to the pull-down machine. I'm not saying, again, that there's anything wrong with the pull-down machine. It's great, okay, for what it is. However, you get more rotator cuff and shoulder blade engagement when you do pull-ups of any type. When you get proper rotator cuff engagement as you pull your body up, your shoulder blades flatten themselves to the back of your rib cage, as opposed to when you do pull downs of any type, wide, narrow, under grip, your body has to consciously, you have to really fight to feel those muscles where you should. And the, the shoulder blades do not line up pinned up against the back of the rib cage like they should when the rotator cuffs are firing hard to do stabilization. So we want that. We want them to work naturally in accordance with how our other bigger, stronger muscles are operating. So we'll keep a strength balance between the two. I used the analogy earlier of thinking about a pitcher because in sports, the rotator cuff muscles are that valuable. In weight training, doesn't matter what exercise we do, most trainees don't even think about well, my rotator cuff muscles are engaged right now, or they're not engaged right now. Most don't think about it. They will think about it when there's pain. That's the deciding factor, okay? Brothers and sisters, hear me clearly on that. Pain is your deciding factor on whether or not your rotator cuffs are engaging properly or not engaging properly. We don't want any of that. So as we're getting on through a few decades of training, and as I said earlier, especially getting on past 50, the tendency, the habit, call it even in some cases the laziness. How about this? The fear of getting injured. Or how about this? Just plain getting too heavy and too fat to be able to do pull-ups or chin-ups of any kind. When that happens, what do you do? So, I'm going to show a video right here uh, of my son Gable doing some very good pull-ups without any assistance, right? The first five are without any assistance at all, as you can see. And then he's going to go down after the first fifth one, and he's going to pick up a band and attach it to the two cross members, the two crossbars, the safety catches, in my power rack. You can do it on the inside of the power rack or the outside of the power rack. I have extensions go to the outside of the power rack. So he's attaching the band, and now he has an assist. So... For those of you who cannot do regular pull-ups, regular chin-ups, because you're too heavy, go right ahead and use a band for assistance and do it sideways instead of through the bar and looping it through your legs and it goes right up your crotch. I mean, most people, it's not comfortable and it pulls you off to one side that way too. So this is a much more balanced, safer way of doing it. And the band is perfect. For the rack, you can use different strength bands depending on your body weight, or you can move it up or down in the rack placement holes with the safety catch. So if you want more help, raise it up higher. If you want less help, put it down lower. So you'll have an assist. So either way, I would still choose to do that banded chin up with the assist because my rotator cuffs and my shoulder blades are still getting heavily engaged when I do that pull-up motion. So for the long-term health of my shoulders, I would choose to do that rather than do pull-downs. So you guys and girls out there who are defaulting regularly on doing pull-downs instead of doing pull-ups, it's time. It's time to change that, especially if you've noticed that there's a little bit of shoulder uncomfortability. And the truth is, at one point in time, I don't have shoulder issues at all. But at one point in time, I did feel something coming on. So I went ahead and when I got some, some therapy done on my shoulders, I'm talking about some soft tissue therapy, I had a really, really smart therapist at the time who taught me and showed me how the rotator cuffs get engaged 
every time your upper arm moves up or down. So we always think about the rotator cuffs being involved when we do overhead presses. Not too many people think about how are they involved when you do a pull down or a chin up and you're pulling your elbows down towards your hips. When you do that, the rotator cuffs are engaged then as well. So he showed it to me, explained it to me why it's better to go ahead and do chin ups or even assisted chin ups of any type, wide grip, narrow grip, under grip versus doing pull downs of any kind. So uh, I'm also reminded of Charles Poliquin. Charles Poliquin was a strength coach. Uh, he passed away in recent years and he recommended in all of his writings as well, again, for the strength of the rotator cuff relative to the big, strong internal rotators of the pec and the lat, he recommended doing chin-ups, pull-ups of every single type above doing pull-downs. Pull-downs were the last option for him. So he was smart. He was right. I agree with it as well. So hopefully you'll Think about this and consider using maybe the band if you can't do any pull-ups or just going and doing regular pull-ups or chin-ups. Or lastly, how about doing negative only? And this is how I would have somebody do negative only chin-ups. And you see my young son, Gabriel, going at it again. I surprised him with this and I said, why don't we go ahead and do a nice set uh, eight to 10 reps, negative only, wherein on the first rep, he's taking a solid 10 seconds to lower himself. And then each rep gets a little bit faster, nine seconds, then eight seconds, then seven seconds. And you'll see he's progressively going a little bit faster without hesitation, jumping right back up to the fully contracted position and then lowering himself extra slowly. And fatigue is starting to set in a little bit right around this rep upcoming, you see he tries to hesitate. His brain doesn't want him to jump up there as quick. <laughs> Suddenly the legs don't work as well. And here he is wrapping it up these last two reps. It's coming down a little bit quick. And so we call it right on this next rep when it's just getting a little bit dangerous. And that's it for negative chin-ups. Chin-ups, where you put a box at the base of the pull down, at the base of the, uh, the power rack, and you jump up and then just lower yourself slowly and then do that repeatedly. It's very, very intense doing just negative chins or negative pull-ups. Avoid the positive end altogether. Just about anybody could do those if you're strong enough. Well, if you're strong enough, if you're not too overweight, let's say. And you do them, you know, until it gets unsafe. Each one of those is going to get a little bit faster as a set progresses. You might take 10 seconds to lower yourself on the first repetition, and then maybe nine on the second repetition, and then eight. It's a great way to count 10 reps, by the way. Do 10 on the first, nine on the second, eight on the third, seven, six, and so on until you get down to you know, a two second or a one second drop because that's how fast you'll be coming down at that point in time. And you do that until it's unsafe. You don't want muscles being yanked too hard. So negative only chin-ups, as you can see, they're being done right here. So that's it for today. Just some food for thought. The next time you want to go ahead and arrange this exercise in particular, take the chin-ups, take the pull-ups pull before taking the pull-downs any type before taking the pull downs. That's it for today. From my heart to you, John Hart, thanks for stopping by today. Hey, before you leave, please, off to my left, you're gonna see this disc pop up around my head right now. That is the subscribe button for my channel. Please give it a tap. And down below, there's a thumbs up button over there. Before you go, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps the channel out a lot on the YouTube algorithm. That's it for today. I'll see you soon. Look forward to it. Bye.